Uh, he's doing a very good defensive job on Hardaway so far in this third quarter. Hardaway, until then, <laughs> got the friendly roll. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to talk about how Anthony Penny Hardaway was a matchup nightmare for Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. And even though MJ is my favorite player of all time, in this case, we got to give credit where credit is due. Penny Hardaway was a beast. But before we start with this episode, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, let's do it. Now, when Penny Hardaway came into the NBA in 1993, he did not have an easy start. Fans were super mad that the Orlando Magic traded away Chris Webber, who was a sure superstar, in return for Penny Hardaway, who most fans had never heard of. Also, the Orlando Magic already had a more than solid point guard in Scott Skiles, so why would they need another one? Well, it wouldn't take long for everybody to see that Penny Hardaway was the real deal. He was something that we did not know we needed. A tall point guard who could literally do it all. Just like Magic Johnson, but a way better shooter. Penny was the perfect sidekick for Shaquille O'Neal and this was just a dream combination and a dream project for every NBA fan. This is a young man that really has the complete Penny, two or three positions. Of under control. Very talented player. Obviously, going to see him do some spectacular. A young Magic Johnson. Get better and better and better. All he wants to do is play basketball. Nice looking move for the rookie who soared in and gets his first NBA field goal. He gets in and does it right off the bat. And, and all the teammates love him because, you know, if you ran hard and got to your spot, he was going to hit you. I won the ball all the time, right? But got to give it to Nick. Got to get 3D. Got to get his shots. So he was really good at that. And then, like, if guys wasn't, you know, hitting their shots or whatever, then he'd say, move. Let me go to work. You had to honor Penny from shooting the three, D. Scott in the corner, Nick Anderson on the other side. And if you didn't honor that, they were going to get wide open shots. And if you did honor it, Shaq was going to break the rim on your ass. I got to worry about one person in my conference. That's the mighty Michael. Guess what? Mike, Scotty, Phil Jackson, we ain't scared. Now, as we all know, back in the days, players were way more competitive, and Anthony Penny Hardaway was just the same way, especially when it came to playing against Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. But yeah, let's see what he has to say. What was it like going against MJ during that period of time? You know, it was so weird because, you know, we were all fans before we got to the league. When we, when we got there, he wasn't in the league. He came mm -hmm. back, and I was kind of like, I'm the big dog. <laughs> you know, I already said myself. I mean, Michael is Michael, but yeah, he gonna have to show me. You know, basically that's what that was my mentality because I had already been in the league and established myself. But quickly playing the Bulls, you could just tell he was rusty, but you could tell he was a bad dude, man. You just you, the respect was always there. But my thing was, you have to attack him before he attacked you. But. All we did was piss him off. Now, for those of you who also play basketball, you probably know that there are always certain players that, for whatever reason, you can't guard them. And sometimes you don't even know why. So every player has that one or two guys that, for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out on defense. And with Penny Hardaway, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen always used to have huge problems. And I can, okay, with Penny, it's a little bit different. I know exactly why. But in the next clips, I want to show you some of the highlights where Penny really destroyed Pippen and Jordan. These guys are incredible one-on-one -on -one players. Here, Michael's looking for help, trying to figure out where he's going to push Penny for help, and Penny just says, hey, he's going to let us fly right there. Hard. Penny is still at 12 points already. 
Turns to his right oh. this time and hits it. What a Whoa. shot. Uh, Michael has it pushed off so far out on the block. Kenny just backs him down and fades away from about 15 feet with a hand right in his face. Here's Hardaway. There's two. Kenny Hardaway. That's the reason. Hardaway, fade away. Yes! Well, he's taking advantage of my... Michael Jordan. Well, Penny right now, he stands clear out. Stay there because Michael Jordan's got three fouls on him. Didn't take him. He sees the help coming and shoots the step back. Beautiful shot. Yeah, he's going to go to the next level. <laughs> it was a three-point Chicago lead at the half. It was a three-point Orlando lead to make it five. Oh, on That's the pick for Hardaway. Four on the shot clock, Kenny shoots. <laughs> Jordan, Hardaway gets a pick, and Grant takes the jumper, got it! Well, Kenny Hardaway's take. Over to Scott, they quickly get it in the hands of Hardaway! Oh. You know, the thing that they haven't done well this year so far is shoot the threes. Personal Shaquille with four. Isolated against Nick Anderson. Away and a beautiful play by Anthony Hardaway. Five on the 24. Hardaway, nice thing. What a move by Penny Hardaway, sliding his three and a half remaining in this first quarter. Hardaway knocks down the three points. So then the Bulls do want to come. Matt Lucas and Ahmad Rashad from Chicago. Beautiful lead thrown by Brian Shaw. Penny Hardaway also took a shot in the mouth. Here's Hardaway posting. Michael will play him without the double team. And Hardaway, Anthony Hardaway, is the key to this team offensively. Getting off the pick and roll. Hardaway and Shaquille O'Neal over Michael. My goodness. That's another. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Hardaway trying to drive on Jordan. He can pull up and shoot the jump shot in the lane. He's big enough to do it. And he did and draws the foul. Two years ago, I don't think he would have challenged Michael like this. Michael's still one of the better defensive players. But Hardaway has the ability to get in the lane and at 6'7", elevate over Michael Jordan. He's outscored Michael 12 to 6 in this ball game. The side, Horace Grant runs down the loose ball. He'll try it again. But Hardaway's having a big night. Hardaway to Shaquille O'Neal. Back to Hardaway. He'll take the three. For Hardaway. Makes the three, and Anthony Hardaway has hit four and has 19 points. He was 7 for 29 in the playoffs. Now, as we all know, Penny Hardaway's career did not end on a high note. Why? Because of his unfortunate injuries. And I got to be honest, from all the players that had a cut short career, Penny Hardaway is still, even until today, my favorite player. And I think he's special. I think he really was special. Even until today, I've never seen a player with that skill set who looked the way, who played that way. I think Penny Hardaway was just simply one of a kind. But let's take a look at his career end. I couldn't run the same, my gait changed. Wasn't making all-star games anymore. I say for me it was disappointing, you know, because we didn't I wasn't getting the respect that I once had gotten. Hardaway on the bench. I went from being first team all NBA to probably third team and then after that, just off the map. I get traded from the Suns to the, uh, to the Knicks. Try to salvage some type of career. Benny comes right across, that ankle just rolls over. Then went to the Miami Heat. Like a year later, made that team, made the starting lineup. After that, I went back, tried out for a couple other teams. Nobody really took me seriously after that, though. It was like my name had already gone down, and I don't think anybody wanted to deal with it anymore. Looked like he was going to set all type of records there. Poof, he was gone. Did y'all want to play the Bulls in the playoffs when he returned? Man, you know, the, the biggest thing was when M first came back, and I was like, he's back. Like, I wanted to play against MJ, and then he retired before I came into the league. Mm -hmm. Then when I came into the league, he comes back. So my first mindset is, damn, MJ's back. And then I snapped out of that shit. <laughs> I snapped out of that shit real quick. Like, all right, you got to go in his ass. You got right. to get his respect. Because this was my favorite player, along with Matt Magic, who was number one. But MJ, who, who didn't like MJ? So when he came back, and we played them for the first time, I got the best of him and Pip that game. I think I had 36. And I was so, I didn't even sleep that night because I was so hyped and ready to play that game. And we won, but I think I only pissed him off. I pissed him off. <laughs> I know that for sure. But it was early in the season and we were one of the first teams 
in the early in the season to beat that 72 and 10 team. We were one of the 10, and that's the game I had 36. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. With 22 points to tie a season high, Hardaway gets inside.